This video is sponsored by Busu. Check out Busu, the links below. You can sign up and start learning for free and try out the Busu Premium Free Trial for seven days. Most countries on our planet have an official language. For example, the official language of France is French, and the official language of Bhutan is Zonka. Some countries, however, have multiple official languages. Take Sri Lanka that recognizes Sinhala and Tamil as its two official languages. And then you have somewhere like South Africa that has 11 official languages, ranging from exported languages like Afrikaans to native ones like Swazi and Zulu. When a language becomes official it gets a variety of special perks like it being used in government schools and business it can really help protect a language that might be endangered this is why it was demanded that maori become an official language in new zealand to help protect it from becoming extinct it was made official in 1987 the language that has become most commonly made an official language for a country is of course english over 50 nations on our planet in every continent minus alaska have made English an official language. What's incredibly strange however is the fact that the largest English speaking nation and perhaps the most influential country on our planet not only doesn't have English as an official language but lacks any kind of official language altogether. I'm of course referring to the United States of America. The USA as a whole does not have an official language though if we dig into things on a state by state level a different kind of picture starts to emerge. 31 of the states of the USA, including but not limited to the likes of Alabama, Idaho, Wyoming, Utah, and New Hampshire, have all recognized English as an official language on a state level. And some even have multiple official languages, like how Sioux is an official language in South Dakota, or how Hawaiian is an official language in, well, I'm sure you can figure out what state Hawaiian is an official language in. That's right, it's Maine. This also means that 19 states in the USA recognize no language as official. English or otherwise. And while across the board English might not be official in the USA, it is seen as the nation's de facto language. This means that it is used in the same way as an official language but doesn't get the title of official or any kind of other special perks. The USA isn't the only country that lacks an official language. Various other countries have languages that are recognized on a state-by-state -state basis. And there's also Australia that has no official language at a federal level either. This could easily be a story unto itself, I'm sure. Though for now, we are just focusing on the USA with its lack of official language. The lack of an official language in the USA is baked into the founding of the nation. Not only was no official language decided upon for the nation, when the constitution was being written, but the founding fathers consciously decided not to add one. This is fundamentally all because the USA was back then and pretty much always will be a very diverse nation in the realm of language. Even during the 18th century when the USA was becoming its own independent nation, it was incredibly diverse linguistically. While the British settled and colonized the land, which in tow made English vastly popular, other languages were being spoken to. Languages like German, Dutch and French were all popular in the original 13 colonies. Writer of Diversity in America Vincent N. Perillo said on the matter that 18 languages were spoken on Manhattan Island, now part of New York City, as early as 1646. The Dutch, Flemish, Walloons, French, Danes, Norwegians, Swedes, English, Scots, Irish, Germans, Poles, Bohemians, Portuguese, and Italians were among the settlement's early inhabitants. And of course, it wasn't just these imported languages from Europe that were being spoken in the Americas at this time either. There were the plethora of languages being spoken by different Native American tribes who lived in this land long before any Europeans settled there. While a lot has changed since the USA became an independent country on the 4th of July 1776, one thing that has stayed the same is the huge diversity of languages being spoken in the land. In fact, the diversity has only really grown since then. Over 350 different languages are spoken across the USA today. Of course, English is the most spoken, but Spanish takes second place with around 41 million speakers. And the various Chinese languages like Mandarin and Cantonese have around 3.5 million speakers in the country. 
this also just shy of 2 million Tagalog slash Filipino speakers in the nation too. And after these languages, it's languages like French, Russian, Korean, Arabic, and German that are spoken by groups of people too. This shows us that the USA will always be a hugely diverse country, rich in all kinds of languages. As an outsider who only really knows this nation via a handful of its citizens I have a personal connection to and through media the nation produces, it is really easy to imagine the USA as nothing but a solely English speaking nation, but that really is not the case by any means. And while English is the most popular, it is not the universal language of the nation. It's thought that only 78% of the nation's population speak English as a first or joint first language. That means that 22% of the nation don't speak English primarily which is, unless my maths is wrong, over 70 million people. That's more people than the entire populations of most European nations. Before we continue, I want to say a huge thank you to Busu for sponsoring today's video. Now, despite spending the majority of my time talking about names, words, and languages, I actually suck at learning new languages. I struggled in French classes at school, and even to this day, I've struggled with certain language learning apps. So, when Busu offered to sponsor the channel and allow me to try out their language learning platform, I was more than curious to see if it would actually be more successful than my previous attempts at learning a new tongue. And I am more than happy to say that Busu is one of the best language learning tools I've used yet. I have been learning Spanish with Busu and so far it has been going really well. Busu breaks down learning into small achievable lessons that makes learning languages easier and more engaging, allowing you to choose how much you learn every day. Busu is so much more than just a static lesson however. Busu is much more of a living platform than other language learning tools. The Busu community feature allows me to communicate with actual native speakers and get immediate feedback from people who speak the language I'm trying to to learn fluently. There's even Busu Live too, which are online language classes that get you speaking the language you're trying to learn. Something I really enjoy about Busu too is that it actually asks you why you're learning a language and caters your classes around those needs. I picked Spanish and told Busu I was learning it for travel as I'm hopefully visiting South America next year. So Busu is catering my classes more towards words and phrases I might need while traveling. It's seriously great and so surprisingly not a standard feature on many language learning tools that just throw random words at you you might probably never use. Suffice to say, this long-suffering monoglot is thoroughly impressed with Busu, and I look forward to eventually bringing you all a numerous explicados in the future. If you are wishing to learn a new language in an exciting new way, then I really recommend you check out Busu. You can sign up and start learning for free, and try out the Busu Premium Free Trial for 7 days by checking the links down below. Thank you once again to Busu for sponsoring today's video, and one last time, check out the links below to start learning for free and try out the Busu premium free trial for 7 days. Anyway, why didn't the founding fathers decide to give the nation an official language at all? Well it seems like the main reason the USA lacks an official language boils down to that American sense of freedom and liberty. America is a nation built on this concept of freedom, with people being free to do what they want with no intervention, you know, the whole American dream thing. This whole sense of liberty and freedom bled into the languages of the USA too. The Founding Fathers wanted the USA to be a country where people could not only speak freely, but be able to speak freely in any language they wished to speak in, without being persecuted. Making one language, say English, official puts it on a pedestal above all other languages that were being spoken in the nation then and now, and it fundamentally goes against the idea of linguistic freedom the Founding Fathers were going for. By and large, this has been the case in the USA ever since. People have spoken the language of choice with little rebuttal. The federal government to this day will allow American citizens to speak any language and this right is protected in the constitution. Many assert that English only laws would violate the constitution. Though that is not always the case however, there have been instances of groups of people being challenged for speaking a specific language. The most infamous example of this is when enslaved Africans were forbidden from using their native languages in the USA. They were 
were also at times forbidden from learning English either, in the fear that by knowing English they could talk back to their owners and rebel. And likewise, in 2018, a New York lawyer went viral in a video for being angry that the staff in a restaurant he was at was speaking Spanish and not English. There of course have been instances throughout the USA's history of various people trying to make English the nation's official language. Just four years after the nation's founding in 1780, the nation's second president, John Adams, presented a bill to Congress that would have made English the official language of the USA. As we know now, however, that bill didn't pass. It was rejected for a multitude of reasons. As mentioned, making English the official language felt to many like a threat to the liberties of individuals. Others feared that making English official at that time in history would have upset non-British allies in the USA who had helped defeat the British. To many, it felt bad to make the language of the recent enemy official. People also didn't want non-natives to the country feeling alienated or forced to learn the language. And of course, English was already the de facto language in the country, and it wasn't under any particular threat of being overtaken by another language anytime soon. There felt like very little reason for making it the nation's official language, so the idea was dropped. And since then, neither English or any other language has been made official in the States. Though since then, there have been more attempts to make English official. Most noticeably, there were pushes in 1981 and 2006, though of course, both came to no avail. Though the debate over the USA having an official language has not died down by any means, people still have their beliefs in the matter, with there being a variety of pros and cons to English being made official. What's interesting are a lot of the cons to this debate are the same ones that John Adams came up against all the way back in 1780. Those being the argument that English really isn't under threat, so it doesn't need the protection that being made official gives it like other languages have needed in the past, as we mentioned earlier with Maori in New Zealand. The idea of an official language is still seen as being at odds with the American ideals of liberty and people being able to do as they wish. It is also still seen as discriminatory to those not fluent in the language in the USA. And like we established, many states have taken the matter into their own hands and made English official. Many argue that's an issue for states, not the country as a whole. Though of course, many argue in favor of English being granted official status in the whole USA. Those in favor believe that it will promote unity and encourage people to learn a language that everyone in the USA can speak. Some do feel that the language is under threat in the USA and that it might need to be made official to protect it. They also argue that having it made official will help immigrants assimilate into American life more quickly. People also argue that it does not go against individual liberties of people as while it can be made official, people can still speak whatever language they choose. And there's also the debate that English should be made official because the government aren't able to provide for everything in the 300 plus languages spoken there. There's more than just the argument for English however though. Some think languages like Spanish should be given official status too. To this day, the only part of the USA that has given Spanish any sort of official status however is their island territory of Puerto Rico along with English. And as mentioned, some states have given native languages official status as well as English, like Sioux in South Dakota and Hawaiian in Maine. Though perhaps most impressively, we have Alaska, which has given 20 of its native languages official status, as well as English. So it seems that the debate about an official language in the USA is an ongoing one without a clear yes or no answer. For now, it seems deeply ingrained into the roots of the USA for them to not have one, and it seems to have worked so far, despite it not being the norm on a global stage. Perhaps the question shouldn't be, why doesn't the USA have an official language, but instead be, why do so many countries bother having an official language? The United States gets by fairly well without one, as the many other countries. But anyway, happy belated 4th of July United States of America, you great unfinished symphony. 
Name Explain depends on viewers like yourself supporting the channel financially on Patreon. So a huge thank you to everyone who does. Donating just $1 a month helps the channel amazingly and gets you bonuses including ad-free videos, exclusive content and the power to request ideas to be made into actual Name Explain videos. $2 a month gets you all that plus your name here with all these awesome people. Visit patreon.com forward slash name explain or click the link down below to find out how you too can support the channel. Thank you. Thanks for reaching the end of the video. Why not watch another and subscribe to keep up to date on all things Name Explain? You can find myself on Instagram where I'm Name Explain YT and join the Facebook group Friends of Name Explain to talk with myself and other name nerds. All that will be linked down below. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and once again, thank you all so much.